à, các bạn đang theo dõi livestream của dân làm báo à, buổi trao giải thưởng à, ký giả quốc tế à, báo chí ra tự do quốc tế à, năm 2018 của ủy ban bảo vệ ký giả CPJ à, chương trình đến bây giờ thì cũng chưa bắt đầu à, tất cả mọi người đã vào đây khoảng cỡ chừng à, 900 quan khách à, gồm những nhân vật à, rất là nổi tiếng của thành phố New York À, đến tham dự cái buổi trao giải thưởng ngày hôm nay của CPJ à, Dân làm báo sẽ tiếp tục à, livestream à, toàn bộ cái buổi tổ chức ngày hôm nay à, Xin các bạn theo dõi journalists who are driven by the ideals that lie at the heart of the constitution of this country that guarantees free press. You, by being here tonight, honor them. And later on in these proceedings, I will tell you how you can give them practical support. When you help CPJ, you are striking a blow for democracy. For democracy cannot work without the scrutiny of a free press, a critical media, critical media outlets are crushed without the democratic structures of the rule of law and an independent judiciary. We know that in our bones, and we are witnessing the undermining of those protections here in our own country. For most of its history, CPJ has focused on documenting press freedom violations abroad, trusting that things here at home were essentially okay. No longer. The press in this country is under attack. News organizations are pushing back in the way they knew best by doing good journalism. Sometimes they resort to the courts and occasionally win as in the case of CNN's Jim Acosta. But such victories are rare. Overall, the atmosphere for many of us in the media is increasingly toxic. Reporters are vilified, trolled, and doxed online, and sometimes tragically insulted in real life. With the killing of five of our colleagues in Annapolis, the United States this year ranks alongside Mexico as the third deadliest country in the world for journalists. That is unprecedented and unacceptable. Last week, CPJ ran a story with the headline, panic buttons, cameras, and a gun under the desk. Local news, local newsrooms update security in the wake of Capitol Gazette attack. Who would have thought that we would need to fortify our newsrooms? We remember our colleagues at Capitol Gazette, and we are honored to have two of the members of the newspaper staff here with us tonight. Jamal Khashoggi. We're still a long way from knowing the whole truth of that barbarous act, and even further away from security and justice. But I think we heard today that uh, our contracts and our money trump our principles. That is why CPJ has supported the Knight First Amendment Institute 
in filing a lawsuit to compel the U.S. government to disclose what it knew about threats to Khashoggi. And that's why we urge you to join our campaign, hashtag Justice for Jamal. efforts to ensure an independent investigation and bring the masterminds to justice. It invites people to tell us who they are and why journalism matters to them. In the foyer outside, you will see tables with signs for you to tell your story, snap a photo, and share online to demand justice for Jamal. We in the media are under threat, but fortunately we have CPJ on our side. This organization is working hard to counter the creeping authoritarianism that threatens press freedom globally. So far this year, CPJ has helped win the release from prison of at least 78 journalists. stage. Their courage will inspire us. For them, the fight for press freedom is not abstract. They live it every day. We will also hear from journalists in Vietnam, Sudan, Venezuela, Ukraine, and the Philippines. Their personal stories are not just inspiring. They also bring to life the plight of all independent journalists in their home countries and beyond. That is one of the main purposes of today, to turn an international spotlight on those dark corners of the world where reporters choose to work, even at risk of their own lives, simply because they are reporters. Thank you. We have some unfinished business to attend to from previous years. I am very happy to announce that we have here tonight some of the journalists we honored in the past, but who could not receive their awards at the time because they were behind bars. They are free now and are here to collect the awards. reporting on the consequences of the war against Boko Haram in northern Cameroon. I asked him to write messages of support to him. He got them. And the military court that jailed him also got the message. It freed him after he had served 29 months. And now he is here. Please welcome Ahmed Abad.
bring them to the public. This is what I was doing in Northern Cameroon when the government arrested me and this is what I continue to do now. And the smiles on your faces encourage me to do even more even after I leave this auditorium. I'm here now, thanks to your support. As a journalist who knows the true meaning of persecution, there's no one else like you. I wish to give a specific thanks to Angela Kinto, Africa Program Coordinator. <laughs> who received the award on my behalf last year, and to the management of Radio France International for standing by my friends. I dedicate this hour of the award. Thank you. Gentlemen, please welcome journalist, author, and CPJ board member, Kadi Martin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. These are always inspirational evenings, but I've never felt happier to be in a room full with my friends and colleagues than I do this evening. So thank you for supporting CPJ. Challenging times. Six years ago on this stage, I told you about a man who was in a Chinese prison because he made a documentary about his homeland, Tibet. Let's take a look back. Tonight, we honor a man who is in prison for attempting to capture the reality of Tibet. When Dundu Wang Chen shot the film that got him jailed, Beijing was in the middle of hosting the 2008 Olympics. <laughs> Tibetan's voices are largely muted these days. He was one of the very few bearing witness. <laughs> To punish people for practicing their ancient faith and traditions, to erase all that makes them who they are, that is a cruel form of cultural genocide. China has been trying to do that to the proud people of Tibet by total control of Tibet's media and by demonizing its revered leader, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Permit me a personal note. Through my husband, Richard Holbrook, a champion of the people of Tibet and their remarkable leader, I came to know and deeply admire this inspirational figure and to fully understand the heartbreak of the obliteration of his people's identity, which is China's goal. Tonight, we honor a man who has stood up to Beijing Wanda Wang Chen paid a very high price for his courage. He spent six years in a Chinese cell for the crime of telling the world how Tibetans, among the Earth's most peaceful people, live and worship. The Chinese deemed his film, Leaving Fear Behind, subversive and jailed him for six years. When I told you about Wanda Wang Chen, many of you signed a petition for his release. Tonight, he is free and, and here with us to accept his richly deserved International Press Freedom Award. Wang Chen.
उम्र लगभग समय का चंदूटा से जेल शुरू था चेची तो अनेत्र सिटी जी के आराम दर के तो ने ने मात्र समान जगह से शुरू था हाँ चंगे गाओ चुम अनेत्र जी के शुरू ये अनेत्र मात्र ये रुपा खासे जी के अनेत्र नेतों जी के जानवर के जिसे जन से अच्छी मोड़ा अनेत्र मात्र कौन उनके बियोगी से � Bukan ke beliau ini cuti, jadi kalau nak cuti apa cerita ni, punya tu jual ni. Tiada tiada, ini orang la jenuh cuti, nak cuti ni tu orang tu cuti, tunggu jual ni. Ini seluruh la lebar ini, tak cuti apa ni, ini nama la lucu sahaja tu yang mana. Ini sama tu orang kita yang kau mau jual ni, ni ada la tu cuti yang buat kira ni. Ani pun angkita, jatuh jengke jila, ani ni cuci hari jengke jatuh bocor ni, ani ni jatuh bocor sampai rana ni sok tayo ni. Ina hari jatuh jengke jila, ina cie orang hari. Ani jatuh cie ni gula, tas cie ni cie ni, nara nara, sepuluh orang ni, nara tu cie, nara ni hari. Iki nara nara tu na, ni pun angkita, jatuh semua ni ada, pun ni mula, ni nasi ni cie ni, ani amna dah jatuh cie jila, cie mana ni cie cie boyo. अरे तब बोल दूँगी जिस दिन आप जब जाओ तो तब तो हम सब आओगे मिली ना तो हम तुम किसी किसी के चले जाओगे अरे तो ना जब फिर भी आवाज़ सुनाई दे अरे बोल दूँगी ना निशान भी साइन बुला के तो ना जितना तो अच्छे से करना है ये ना बोलने के लिए चले Thank you. 
Pastor Children's Foundation. And 250,000 to Wises, the organization that reunites children with their families separating the Just last week, we donated a total of $300,000 to the victims of the California wildfires, the firefighters, and the victims of the Thousand Oaks Massacre. I invite you to tune in to the Rolling Rose on January 6th on NBC to learn about our new journalism grantees. Thank you for standing with me and with CPJ in our fight to defend journalists. Have a good evening. CPJ board member Karen Amanda Tulin, who oversaw the videos. They were crafted by Bloomberg TV's talented executive producer Matthew Saul and editor Dan Wallenstein. Shout out, guys. So please turn to the video screen now for a look at the challenges journalists face today. And in Ecuador, 
therefore, a new government promised an end to the media repression of the past. The work of CPJ staffers is responsible for these positive outcomes. But as you know, there is so much more to do. Because for every journalist freed this year, another one was hauled away to jail. Hundreds more were harassed, threatened, beaten, or worse. Getting journalists out of jail is slow and grinding work, as our friends from Reuters know. They are leading a very public campaign to free their two reporters wrongly convicted in Myanmar after a sham trial. If you want to help them, and I know you do, there are buttons just outside the ballroom, and I hope you take one and wear it proudly. The number of journalists killed has been going down, in part because there are fewer journalists covering conflict, which is often the most dangerous of our work. Just ask the journalists in Yemen and Syria and Afghanistan who lost colleagues to war this year. But listen to this. The number of journalists who are murdered for their work is going up. 28 this year. That is 10 more than last year. And these murders are happening in places that were once thought to be safer. Malta, Slovakia, Annapolis, Maryland, and behind the walls of the Saudi consulate in Turkey. Please pause with me for a moment to honor all of our fallen colleagues. Thank you. These journalists did nothing more than their jobs, and someone didn't like their work and decided to kill them. Usually, the killers get away with it, but CPJ's campaign against impunity has helped keep the world's spotlight on these murders until the killers or their sponsors are caught and punished. The world is pretty scary right now. In many countries, it's not just acceptable to insult people who are different and demonize those you don't like. That's become the slimy path to political power. And the forces of press repression seem to be getting louder and more powerful by the minute. The Committee to Protect Journalists exists to fight them and keep fighting them for as long as it takes until journalists worldwide are free to report the news and serve their audiences without getting killed. And you are in that fight with us. It's you who make it possible for CPJ staff to visit journalists in jail and offer comfort programs that teach journalists how to protect themselves, physically and electronically. And you helped create the emergency assistance program that funds medical care to the injured and offers a brief exile to the threatened. Let's make no mistake here. The bullies and despots and murderers think they're winning. They believe they can shut us up forever because no one cares about journalists. They are so wrong. <laughs> those that believe they can get away with it and those that believe that a life of a journalist is worth less than the coin exchanged for arms and planes. They will not win because we will keep fighting them. All of us. All of us in this room. The Committee to Protect Journalists and you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. I would also like to take this time to remind us of American journalist Austin Tice, who has been missing in Syria since he was detained six years ago. We hope that Austin will be back home with his family and friends soon. Our next prisoner is appearing here tonight for the first time as a board member 
of CPJ. She is an award-winning journalist, former New York Times bureau chief in various African regions, and now editor-in-chief of HuffPost. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lydia Paul. Goes, Sudan is often overshadowed by its turbulent neighbors. That's a shame because the plight of journalists there is dire. Their story deserves to be heard. If you do your job as an independent reporter in Khartoum, you risk losing your livelihood and your liberty. What motivated Amal Haban is just the ability of Jaws to do their work, their work without intervention, without recognition. <laughs> She reported on police abuse, government failure in responding to health crisis, human rights and women rights issues, including forced marriages under aged girls, stories that no one dares to publish in, in Sudan. We at CPG have reported Amal's detention as early as 2008 when she, when she was banned from writing. We've called on the government to allow her to be released when she was detained and to allow her to travel when she was banned from traveling. From my own work and my own life, I know how challenging it is to report from this part of the world. So I'm deeply honored to pretend, present the 2018 International Press Freedom Award to Amal Khalifa Idris Habami. It embodies the fight for freedom and human rights for all. 
regardless of color, gender, economic, or material status. The Khartoum government follows a cruel ISIS-like system to suppress freedom of expression and freedom of the press. Journalists are arrested, journalists are arrested, beaten, and threatened with death. The security service control everything in harass newspapers and other media. In January and February, 15 journalists were arrested because of their coverage of anti-inflation demonstration in Khartoum. Some of the same journalists were later questioned simply for meeting with EU ambassadors in Khartoum. A Sudanese blogger living in Saudi Arabia, Hisham Ali, was extradited in May and handed to Sudanese security for talking online about corruption in the security service. These are all daily violations that show the grip of the security service on the press. The latest of these violations is the forcing of editors by the state to sign a press code that mandates self-censorship. The regime practices these horrific violations against press freedom to conceal its crimes and express freedom to conceal its crimes and widespread violations of human rights. It blocks journalists' ability to, to, to transmit information and facts about murder and rape in Darfur and the Nubian mountains, about the vast corruption of the government officials and the complete collapse of basic services like education, health, and the environment. The security service also banned reporting on violations of religious rights or women rights by enforcing public order and social laws. Sudan today is one of the worst countries to live in, despite its abundant resources and wealth. Journalists in Sudan are in the front line against the regime. They are the primary source of information for society. I hope the world will pay attention to their operation. Thank you. To their operation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the President and CEO of the Knight Foundation, Alberto Ibarra. Thank you, Bill, and good evening, everyone. I have wonderful memories of a free and prosperous Venezuela from my time there as a Peace Corps volunteer. It was a different time in the life of that country. Freedom and optimism were the emotions I most clearly remember. In the decades that followed, corruption and economic hardship fueled Hugo Chavez's rise to power. The Chavez presidency was disastrous for a free press, as it was for the country's economy. Repression of the press has continued and even worsened under his successor, Nicolás Maduro. Independent media organizations face intimidation, threats, and violence. Maduro has even encouraged his supporters to attack journalists at rallies and other public events. Whether that happens there or here, it is a threat to free press everywhere. In May of this year, the Maduro government opened an investigation into a leading independent newspaper's website, and in September, it sent a photographer to a military prison. Luzmeli Reyes of the independent news website, Efecto Cocuyo, is our next lawyer. She faces these and other threats on a daily basis 
which makes her full, accurate, contextual search for truth reporting all the more remarkable. Please turn your attention to the video as we share her story. Being a journalist in Venezuela has become increasingly dangerous. Freedom. These young journalists have 
never known total freedom, yet they defend him through their work. One day, watching my son, a former journalist, leave dressed as before war, I said, be careful, don't leave me without a son. So numbers we know, in 2018, 45 journalists around the world have been killed for their work. Other numbers, we don't know. When a journalist is killed, how many more are silenced? When one is imprisoned, how many fall quiet? In Venezuela, journalism is an endangered species. 60% of the local press has disappeared. Newsrooms look like ghost towns. More than 1,000 journalists have emigrated or gone into the side. But we are stubborn. <laughs> Even in the darkness, Venezuelan journalists find a way. I share this award with my team at the Feto Bocuyo. And in the middle, <laughs> an independent outlet create thanks to the genius for making a tenacity of my colleagues, Laura Welfare and Josefina Rogero. Young entrepreneurs, Carlos Aguiló and Jose Monagas, and a leap of faith by three journalism students. Our young team commitment and talent reinforce our faith in this new generation. I dedicate this to those who help make our dear a reality, and to our relatives who support us through adversity. Thank you to my mother, Elba Rosa, my son Ivan, and my husband Davis, who are my pillars. <laughs> Our all, thank you to my fellow Venezuelan journalists who resist despair while telling stories of a nation that refused to die. We persist, insist, and resist. We are optimistic, defending freedom and truth to the end, although some who have us believe all is lost. Facing oppression, our response is simple, to do more and better journalism. Thank you to CPJ for this recognition, for putting the spotlight on Venezuela, and to all those tonight who devote their lives to this profession. And finally, I would like to say some more Spanish. <laughs> Viva el periodismo venezolano! <laughs> Duterte doesn't just get mad. 
he gets even. Duterte has thrown the entire playbook of how to attack the press at Maria and at Rambler, the feisty news website she founded. They've been sued multiple times, accused of evading taxes, violating the anti dummy law which restricts foreign media ownership, and something called cyber libel. Maria faces up to 10 years in prison for a tax evasion charge filed just the other week. I first met Maria after Ferdinand Marcos was ousted in 1986. That was a hopeful time when journalists were basking in the new freedoms. Since then, the Philippines has lurched from one crisis to another. But through it all, Maria has kept an unflinching and sometimes infuriating optimism. The words hopeful and journalist don't often go together. But that's Maria. Maria was born in the Philippines, migrated with her family to the US, studied molecular biology and theater at Princeton, and then returned to Manila in the 1980s. She's been a reporter, news anchor, an executive for Philippine TV, and at CNN, where she was Manila and Jakarta bureau chief. She's also written two books on terrorism in Southeast Asia. In 2012, Maria founded Rappler. Fearless and spunky, Rappler uses the web and social media to reach out to a millennial audience. In 2016, Rodrigo Duterte was elected promising to wipe out drug-related crime. It will be bloody, he warned. The funeral parlors will be packed. Fish in Manila Bay would feast on the carcasses of criminals. He has kept his promise. Thousands have been killed, many among them the poorest in society. Rappler and Maria stood up to Duterte. They showed how he weaponized the internet, unleashing fake news and troll armies. They exposed police impunity in the war on drugs. They told the truth and so made enemies. Trolls have threatened Maria with rape and death. Today, there is an armed guard standing outside the rapper office. And when in Manila, Maria carries bail money in her purse in case of arrest. Rapper's reporter has been banned from the presidential palace, but she continues to report critically and protected. Others have been caught by threats, not Rappler and not Maria. The Philippines, despite its problems, used to be the torchbearer for press freedom and openness in Asia. Maria and her team are a shining example of principled resistance to the erosion of democratic norms. They have also shown how a newsroom led and staffed by women can stand up to a misogynist president. <laughs> Gwen I feel commanded respect for her courage and integrity. She would have found in Maria a kindred spirit. It is a great honor and pleasure to present the first Gwen Eichmann Award to Maria Reza.
been an incredible experience these last few days with Z. Here with the other IPFA awardees, uh, it's an incredible honor to be here tonight and also incredibly humbling. Thank you, Committee to Protect Journalists. This comes at a time when Rattler and I need your attention and your support. This is an existential moment for global power structures, turned upside down by technology. When journalists globally are under attack, when power structures are shifting, our problems in the Philippines are partly caused by your problems here. American social media technology platforms, once empowering, now weaponized against journalists, activists, and citizens. especially in countries where institutions have crumbled. We at Rappler fight impunity on these two fronts, the Philippine government and Facebook, which is essentially our internet. Both see violence, fear, and lies that poison our democracy. Those lies on social media, seeded on social media, they form the basis of the government's legal cases against us. They are planted, they were planted and seeded a year before they erupted and the cases were filed. This latest tax evasion case reclassifies Rattler as a dealer in securities. I'm obviously not a stockbroker, right? I would get paid more because, because I'm a journalist. I'm now labeled a criminal and can go to prison for 10 years. With this announced indictment, my government has bent the law to the point of breaking, to its breaking point. It has perverted the rule of law and used it against journalists and perceived critics, weaponized, like social media. Facebook connects more than 2.3 billion people around the world, and because of that, national boundaries have collapsed. There is a global playbook. You see it, right? And autocrats are learning from each other. The most compromised accounts during Cambridge Analytica, for example, are here. We're here in the US, the second in the Philippines. When President Trump called CNN and the New York Times fake news, a week later, President Duterte called Rappler fake news. When President Trump took away the accreditation of CNN's Jim Acosta, he was following what President Duterte did earlier this year to our reporter. Oh, he also banned me from the palace, even though I hadn't reported from there during his administration. I want to share six lessons and appeals for action. One, the time to fight for journalism, for our constitution, the Philippines and yours, is now. You heard it from Kathleen. That's one. <laughs> Two, don't stay quiet when you are attacked. The exponential lies on social media, coupled with the president's words, yours and mine, manufactured truth, violence is consent. We need to continue reporting without fear or favor. And you heard these words here last year from my former colleague, Christiana Manpour. We need to be truthful, not neutral. Four, we need to build global alliances because information is the currency of power, now manipulated by global players. You have the Mueller investigation here. Well, if Russia is doing B to C, China is doing B to B. 
You know what I mean by that? Startups. Check out Freedom House's report released this month, which shows how China is exporting its digital authoritarianism to other countries. It's happening. Five, we need to hold tech platforms to account. of news. They've taken that power away from us. So they have to take on the responsibilities journalists once had as gatekeepers. They cannot allow lies to spread. We cannot be torn apart so we cannot agree on the facts. They need to protect the public interest and the public sphere where democracy happens. Six, finally, for multinational businesses and investors, and I see many tables here, I'm being attacked, not just as a journalist, but as the founder of a company that successfully and legally raised money to make an idea a reality. Let my government know that you do not agree with its draconian measures and the signal it sends to investors that the Philippines is not ready for innovation or investment. For each of us in this room, it's about values and principles. Our mission, as journalists, it's very clear. Patricia Evangelista, who dedicated her life the past two years to the drug war and our impunity series, the drug war that has killed thousands to tens of thousands, she's here. I want to ask her to stand up. Patricia, please stand up. We have heard from tonight 
are true warriors on the front lines of the war for press freedom. And to fight a war, you need funding. And that is why we are here tonight. Many of you here have purchased tables or tickets, and we thank you so much for that. Some of you here are here as guests. No matter how you came, we know why you came. Because you care about the work of the press, and the safety of journalists. So we're going to ask you to make this fundraiser an even bigger success. We are helped in that by the Knight Foundation, which is offering a dollar-for-dollar dollar match. Every dollar we raise in the next few minutes, the Knight Foundation will match up to a limit of a quarter of a million dollars. A quarter of a million dollars, guys. So any money you give in the next few minutes is worth double to CPJ. So, if you can donate $10,000 to help journalists like those you've seen this evening, please raise your hand now. And one of our spotters will come and take your information. We've got one at least. $10,000. We have another $10,000. I feel like I should be one of those people at an auction, but I'm not. But I can just keep saying $10,000. We've got another over here. $10,000. Spotters are around the room. Come on, don't be shy. Just raise your hand. And if you're already texting on your phone, under the table, I'm speaking to you, you know who you are. We just made it easy for you to do. You can use your text to pledge function. Just text CPJ to 41444 and make your pledge. The information is also up on the screens up there. That's 41444. Text away. And remember, $10,000 will be worth $20,000 The money will enable CPJ to continue with its efforts to help some 70 Syrian journalists who fled Assad and Russian forces over the summer. Many are still trapped in northern Syria up against the Turkish border. We have helped some to get to safety. Some have gotten to Western Europe, but many more still need it. And so I remember that it's hard how much the bodies that you can't even imagine is covering this. It's an unreal story. There aren't many independent journalists in Ukraine. There are even fewer journalists who are willing to take the risks. She chooses topics that are taboo in Ukrainian society or uncomfortable for Ukrainian society. Conflict in Eastern Europe, political corruption, the actions of the security services, also reporting on minorities and the far right and nationalist groups. What many consider to be unpatriotic is to carry out these types of uh, investigations. Many people try to ask uh, questions. To us, why you make these stories, why you, why you show this story. It's important to say truth because we are journalists. Our job to say truth and to give truthful information for the people. If we can't do this, uh, I don't understand why I should be journalist. Doing the kind of work that Nastia does and other independent journalists do here is, is very nice. They sent me the messages that they said that they will kill me because it's unfair that I'm alive. When I started receiving threats, for me, she was an example that a person can receive a lot of threats and still do her job. CPJ has been involved in Ukraine uh, documenting press freedom violations ever since we started our work. We do advocacy with the authorities. We uh, had relations to Ukraine. We have been reporting on every single case when a journalist was intimidated, harassed, and Esther Stanford was one of them. 
officials saying that you are bad guys and you are not bad girls. I can't understand what is my job if I can't say truth. We want to understand what happened in, in our country and we will make these stories. We are caught between a rock and a hard place. On the one hand is Russia with its propaganda against Ukraine, and on the other, the Ukrainian government that always says, do not criticize us when we are under attack from an external enemy. Do not tell all the truth, but just part of the truth. You will tell the whole truth when the war is over. It's difficult to work when you are expected to choose between patriotism and professional journalism. Standing here in front of my colleagues from all around the world, I know this pressure is not something only we, Ukrainians, feel. It's pressure ex experienced by anyone who chooses journalism in their profession. But I also know that there is no need to choose. Honest journalism is the best form of patriotism. My colleague journalist Miroslava Gongadze is sitting today in the audience. Her husband, her husband journalist Georgi Gongadze was killed 18 years ago. Those who ordered his, his murder have not been found. 20 years ago, CPJ gave its International Press Freedom Award to the Belarusian journalist Pavel Sheremet. Two years ago, Pavel was killed in a car explosion in central Kyiv. Today, we still don't know either those who had ordered the crime or who carried it out. Were the masterminds from Russia, which he heavily criticized, or were the killers connected to the Ukrainian authorities? Or maybe it was an attempt to frighten of all of us, those who tell the truth in turbulent times. The journalists who report on two wars in Ukraine, the military action against Russia and the war against corruption. This award is not about my personal achievements. It's a sign of what Ukrainian journalists have to deal with while moving our country towards Europe and the rest of the civilized world. And and their values, respect for freedom of speech and human rights, transparency and accountability of those in power, respect for human dignity, equality and non-violence. I strongly believe that we will succeed in taking this role thanks to honest and brave journalism. Thank you.
People are stopping me to thank me, thank my colleagues for being journalists and doing what we do. I know we talk about the dark clouds of our industry right now, but it's a sign to me that there's a reawakening, uh, an appreciation for our role in a functioning society. And so I accept that thanks, and we in turn are obligated to pass on our thanks to those who risk much more than many of us in the pursuit of truth every day, the heroes among us, the people that we honor today. So thank you to all of them. We all know that China has become a model of online news censorship. In neighboring Vietnam, they've copied that model. Independent journalism is almost impossible in the mainstream media. So Vietnamese who want to report truth are forced to blog. The authorities come after them, too. Her eldest daughter was nicknamed Nam, which means mushroom. So her pen name is Martha Mushroom. It's her way of reminding herself she's a mother who cares about the future of the next generation. She saw injustice in Vietnamese society, land grabbing by state-linked corporations, environmental disasters, deaths in police custody. I mean, she was a truth seeker um, in a society where truth is not allowed to be spoken. She criticized the government in a way that sometimes I had to sit back and say, whoa, would you be safe? But that never stopped her. They saw her as a threat. She was leading a whole new generation you know, into the blogosphere and challenging the official narrative. That's why they decided they needed to, uh, to take her out. She slipped out of her house to meet CPJ in 2014, and during our, our interview um, at, a, at, a, at a local hotel, her mother was calling the whole time, saying that the plainclothes police were at the house asking where she was. I don't know as well the role that CPJ plays. When CPJ had a mission in Vietnam, um, you know, their senior staff met with her and she has high respect for them because without them, the work that she does will never get to be known. You are a very brave woman. Do you think you're a brave woman? Yeah. No. Because I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm always afraid, but who will speak if you don't? It's me and I got a text. Lennon was arrested. There were 50 security police, they raided sector house. Ten years in prison in some of the most abysmal conditions in the world. When Vietnam's Communist Party decides that you are an enemy of their state, as a journalist, they pull out all the stops to make your life hell. She reported on how people die in police custody. Now she's being held in police custody. What could be more dangerous for a reporter? Well, this is what we call the business of Mary Lee. Since CPJ announced this award to imprisoned journalist May Nam this past summer, we can now welcome released journalist May Nam. Give me your tired, your poor, your hundred massive yearning. 
all of us in this room can come together to defend it in this country. In fact, in fact, we have an obligation to do so, not just for our own sake, but for the sake of people around the world who are inspired by the robust, freewheeling, and yes, sometimes reckless debate at the heart of American political life. We believe in press freedom, we believe in it because it's part of our heritage, and also because it's the only framework we know that truly protects the rights of all. And to all those who are willing to stand up and fight, whether in the United States or around the world, CPJ will be with you. We will continue to denounce the violations, to confront the abusers, to comfort the victims, and to honor the heroes. We will always, always, always speak out about what's at stake and why it matters. Thank you to everyone for being here this evening. Good night.